Let's take a look at the project planning features in TempoWeave. Right now I have a draft, and this draft I intend to use to weave a couple of pillow cases, or pillow tops. So I'm going to go to the project information screen on my menu and go to the planning tab. I've already set up my ends per inch and picks per inch at 24, and let's click the dimensions tab. First focus on the bottom left hand side. So I have a current width that has 408 ends. It's going to be 17 inches in the read and this is calculated by my uh, number of war pins divided by my ends per inch. My weft picks is 408, that's the actual number of picks in my draft. The length is similarly cal calculated from the picks per inch. And notice the finished estimate. This is different, it's smaller. And the reason is it's a calculation that uses something we call calculation drivers. When you start a brand new project in Tempo Weave, these calculation drivers are all empty. You have to set these with a best guess. So let's first talk about the, um, the draw-in. For those of you new weavers who aren't familiar with the term draw-in, this is the difference from the width in the reed and the width of your woven cloth on the loom. So if you take a tape measure across the fell of your cloth, what you've just woven, and you measure it, you would expect that to be a little bit less than it is in the reed. So it's the difference. So I'm expecting point, a half an inch there. The warp take up and weft take up don't have anything to do with the calculations for the finished estimate. What they do have to to do with is how much yarn you're going to consume because we're going to show later how you can calculate your yarn requirements and we're saying that we'll have we expect to have about four percent take up don't stress a lot about this if you know you've got you know if you think you've got plenty of yarn you don't have to worry about being too exact with this there are ways to measure it but generally we just throw in a number on that to bump it up just a little bit. And what that means is take, take a weft yarn, for example. If you laid it straight across your cloth from one edge to the other and you measured it, the amount you would need to go from one side to another is a little more because it's going to be going over and under the war pins. And that's called the take-up percentage. It's that difference in the same things for the warp. It's not going to travel straight. It's going to bend across the weft threads. Loom waste is the amount you expect to have of warp on your loom that you're not going to weave. That includes the amount you tie on, that includes the amount that's left over at the end when you're finished, that's going back through the heddles into your apron rod. Again, an estimate, just put something in. Here I've got 26 inches, um, could be more, could be less, and some of it depends on the loom and how far you like to weave to the very last. Um, so. These are the drivers that you just set, and the, the shrinkage is something that generally varies by two things. The fiber, cotton's going to typically shrink a little more than, than linen in this case, um, and it also varies a little bit by how loosely woven it is. Uh, loosely woven items will generally shrink a little more percentage, and um, you know that has to do with the, the interlacement and the ends per inch, pick, picks per inch, both. So um, we've got those estimated at 7%. So that when the system calculates the finished width, it's going to take that width in the read minus the draw in and take 7% off. And it's going to end up with 15.35 is the estimated width once we've washed and dried it. Very, very important. That's not when it comes off the loom. That's after you wet finish it. And the length is going to be the, the shrinkage applied to the amount that you wove. So let's look a little further on the right hand side of the screen. We've got a target finish size per piece and normally I probably would have started with this before I even put my draft in. When I even had no warp and weft threads I might have come to the planning screen and started entering a target of okay I want about uh, 15 uh, 15 and a third inches finished width and about 15 and a third inches length. I plan to weave two of these items and sampling. 
I may want to weave for about four inches before I get started on my pillow just to establish my beat, my draw in, see how I like it, um, that sort of thing. Fringe, I'm not planning any fringe. The reason fringe is listed separately is that that would consume uh, warp threads if you were going to have an amount of fringe for piece. So these are all things per piece, and you, the piece count could be one. You know, a lot of times it is if you're weaving a scarf or towels or whatever, you might have several that you're doing on one warp. So that's the pieces of the amount you plan to weave one warp. The sampling is just expected to be a one-time occurrence of sampling allowance if you choose to do that. So now these size requirements for target, they don't, they don't calculate until you hit calculate dimensions. And when you do, that means if I wanted to have this size, um, the size I told it here is calculating I need 406. Well, we designed 408, close enough. That we need 16.91 inches of the reed. Ours is going to be 17, that's fine. The minimum warp length for the project is a very handy calculation because that's how much we warp length we anticipate needing to accommodate all of the woven uh, woven fabrics we're doing, to accommodate the loom waste, all of that. The um, woven length per piece of 16.37, that means that's how much, when we're measuring our pillow, we would expect to be 16.37 inches on the loom before we um, start the next one. So if it was way off, you might want to do some kind of adjustment when you're weaving number of picks per each, and the woven length in yards. So this woven length in yards is um, the 1.02, which is calculated for the two pillow tops. So now that we've got that, we want to know how much yarn is needed. So let's go over to yarn requirements. And the, the length of the warp, this is normally zero. I had been playing with this. And let's go back through this again. That minimum was 1.78. So if I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to wind a two-yard warp, you could say you're going to wind a three, and it'll use whatever you tell it for the requirements. The override dimensions are if you want to change what was calculated. That's all. Um, so if I want to weave 1.4 yards, and I hit calculate, it'll, it'll calculate this. Now we've got a total warp and total weft. We really want to know it by color and see this little in red it says see color information tab for details. If I click here I can tell that I need 180, I'm going to have 184 warp ends in eggplant. That's a simple calculation of 368 yards. The same for olive. The, the weft yarn is uh, it does take into consideration the um, the take up and the woven width and everything. So that 594 yards is the approximate yardage of the weft we need for these two pieces and the sampling. So that is a look at the project planning information. So just again, if if I wanted to start a brand new one because sometimes people get a little confused between the target size and the, um, so if I started a brand new one here, I don't even have to have anything in it. I can go right into project information and I can tweak this, say it's gonna be a four shaft piece, four treadles, going the wrong way there, and the planning, and maybe it's going to be 18 ends per inch on this one, go into dimensions, and notice it just puts one in there because there's really nothing in the current width. And I can say, I want to weave something that's going to finish out at 20 inches wide, 30 inches long. And I want to do three of these. And I want to draw in at 0.75 inches. I'm going to do this in a fiber or cotton or something I think is going to be about 8% shrinkage and, I mean, take up and warp take up, weft take up. Loom waste, maybe I think I'm going to have 30 inches, and I, my shrinkage is going to be about 10%. So when I hit calculate, that tells me with these drivers and with the size that you want, go to design something that has 411 ends in it. A lot of times, that's how I start, because I want to know what I'm, what I'm looking for when I start 
drawing a cross or, or however I'm developing my, my weaving pattern. So that's another way that you can use the project planning tool to just help you get started with knowing how many war pens to use. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.